Good morning, our uh, church. How's everybody on this beautiful resurrection day? Oh, it's such a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Every day that we are in the house of the Lord is a good day. But this one is really special. This is so amazing to be in this time and this place with the love of Jesus Christ all around us as we celebrate his resurrection today. Oh, how wonderful. He's so good to us. He takes such good care of us. Even through the hard and rocky times, he's there. He's holding our hand and he only lets go if we let go. He's always there, and, and He's made that promise to us, and we need to be mindful always to hold on to the Lord. Let's pray. Holy Father, Almighty God, we come into Your house today, grateful and thankful to be Your children, Lord. We're grateful that You are our God. Thank you for your mercy and grace and kindness and love and protection. Thank you for your healing touch, Lord. We need it all. We thank you for this day, this celebration of your resurrection, Lord, which seals our eternal life in you. Oh, precious Lord. As we gather with our brother and sister today here, Please help us to be in one mind and one spirit. Please let your Holy Spirit fill this place in each one of us. Lord, we are here to worship you, to give you glory, honor, and praise, for you alone are worthy of all glory, honor, praise, majesty, and power. And we give it all to you, Lord. We bless your name. It's in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray on this holy day. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Let's stand up and praise our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, the blood. Oh, oh, oh. 
is any good church.
That's the name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he's Lord. That's the name that holds your healing today. That's the name that holds your deliverance today. I think some of us are limping around in life thinking I can't overcome this. You're right. But he already has. <laughs> Why are you going to try to fight a battle that nobody ever won? Except Jesus. And he's standing there with open arms ready to give you that forgiveness, that deliverance, that healing. Let's just sing that chorus one more time together. If you've never experienced the power of Jesus, yes, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, but he said, I'm sending my spirit to live. Yeah. And it's his spirit that draws us to him. It's his spirit in us that gives us healing and deliverance. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a 
first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Amen. Amen. Remember, you can give at ourartchurch.com slash give. We do have receptacles here in the front and the back if you'd like to give that as well. Thank you, Jesus, for today. We're thankful that you are alive and well and that we celebrate you today. Thank you for being with us. We celebrate Easter every single day of the week because we know you are the risen king and you are with us always. We love you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Well, as we're getting ready for our next special this morning, I want to give you a couple of announcements, if uh, if you could help me with those. This, today, we are not going to have our power hour prayer, um, but let me just tell you, everybody I talk to that's a Christian says, you know, I should spend more time in prayer. Well, here is your opportunity. Every Sunday night at 7 p.m., we are praying and prophesying and Heaven is touching earth every Sunday night. So I want you to come out. Sometimes we're running. Sometimes we're laying on the floor. Sometimes we're standing. We're proclaiming. Sometimes we're quiet. Sometimes we're dropping microphones. But this is awesome. Don't miss it. Please connect with us on social media. All those you see there, if you don't, if you don't have time to write them down, please see Brother Ricky. Also, if today is your first time, just do me a favor. Take your phone back there to that sign that's by that door and snap that QR code and connect with us so that we can stay in touch with you. We never sell your data. We're not into that. We just want to stay in touch with you. We want to pray with you. We want to be able to be Jesus' hands reaching out to you. So please connect with us um, because we're family here. Please check out those videos that we just put up. Those are important and timely. The one on the top left, it was we barely got that video out and the world events that the Lord spoke to us about here prophetically happen immediately please check those out the lord does nothing unless he first reveals it to his servants the prophets and that is in operation here at all right church don't believe me watch those videos next wednesday night please take part of this revelation series that is our uh online podcast series of the revelation if you want to be here and be a part of the live studio audience please do that But otherwise, we want you online participating. participating. I promise, I promise it'll change your life. I promise. And the word of the day. Look, it takes grace to get up every day. It takes the Lord's leadership to get up every day. And this right here, the word of the day, will encourage you every day. It's not just a nice little something, but it's a prophetic direction, a lifting up of your head every day. You can check that out on Facebook or sign up to the blog online at rockchurch.com. Now, please give a big hand to these beautiful, amazing, 
kids up here as they sing together. Give them a hand. Come on. These are all rock kids. to the microphones now. You've been good. How many of you have had that bizarre privilege of in the midst of extreme difficulty, we're going to have to mute the other microphones and we have to turn this one down just a little bit in the house. How many of you have had the bizarre privilege of in a moment of extreme difficulty feeling God pursue you? 
And even though things didn't look good, you still knew that he was good. I said, even though things didn't look good, you still knew that he was good. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have some more wonderful worship because this is Easter. Amen. This is the day we we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. You know, for 1,500 years, the church everywhere, in one way or another, greeted each other with a greeting, which I'll say the way our people said it, which, which is this, Christos hariavi merelots, or sniale harutunen Christosi. Christ is risen from the dead. Blessed is the resurrection of Christ. And that's the way we ought to think of today, a day that we remember because this is the day that history pivoted. This is the day history pivoted. So I want to take you back for a short moment before we worship and then we have the prophetic word and the communion. I want to take you back for a, just a few short minutes to give me your undivided attention to a couple days ago, to Good Friday. I want to take you to that moment where the disciples think all their hopes and dreams are lost. And they hear their rabbi calling out. Now, if you looked at his face, you wouldn't have been able to tell that it was him. He was beaten beyond recognition. But they heard him scream through the muffled swollenness of his mouth, Eli, Eli, lama shavokhtani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And for for us Westerners, we hear that and we're like, wow, I guess Jesus was depressed. But he wasn't. He had already told them, you will leave me alone, but I'm never alone. You see, as a good rabbi, he was giving his students their last lesson. Because the way you reference a passage of scripture as a rabbi is just by reading the first line of it. And that was the first line of Psalm 22. He was telling his disciples, if you want to understand what's going on, if you want not to lose heart, please go read Psalm 22. And that's what I'm going to read for you. Psalm 22. And it starts off just that way. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Far from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. But you are holy, enthroned, dwelling, sitting down in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted. And you delivered them out of their hopeless situation. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. In other words, they weren't made to look stupid for trusting you. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. Now this is David writing a thousand years before the time of the crucifixion. They shoot out the lip, like, hmm, nah, nah. They shake the head saying, well, he trusted in God, so let God rescue him. Let God deliver him since God delights in him, and he in God. Oh, but you, Lord, are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breasts. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Listen to this. For there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan. Bashan, the stronghold of Baal worship and of the satanic. They've encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. I'm about to die. I'm dying now is the point of death. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked, <clears throat> excuse me, has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count on my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing. They cast lots. But you, O Lord, don't be far from me. My strength, hasten to help me, deliver me from the sword. My precious existence, 
from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. Now, if that's where that psalm ended, that would be pretty depressing. And for my Jewish friends who read verse 16 or 17 there, it doesn't say like a lion, my hand and feet. It says, I'll, I'll translate it for you. Reading the text that is equivalent to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest copy of this psalm in the world. They, the congregation of the wicked has encircled me. They pierced my hands and my feet. A thousand years before there was ever crucifixion invented by the Romans. Here it is. I'm brought down to the dust of death and my hands and feet are pierced while all those who look at me mock me and they divide my garments, casting lots for them. Read the Gospels, this exactly happened. But remember Rabbi Jesus? Yes, he was saying, students, disciples, go, go read that. Because it doesn't stop at verse 21 or 22. It says, you have answered me and I shall declare your name to my brethren. How does a dead man declare his name to his brethren? Oh, in the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted one, nor has he hidden his face from him. For when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. Those who fear the Lord. All the ends of the world, not just the Jewish nation, they included, but not they only. The ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the family, families of all the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's. Now who's the Messiah? He's the king. That must mean he's the Lord. And he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him. How will the people who are dead bow before him? Even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born to say that he has done it. Rabbi Jesus is telling his students, it looks bad, but it's not bad. They're doing evil, but this isn't evil. I'm taking the greatest evil that man has ever done and making it the greatest thing that God will ever do. That's what the cross is. And so folks like me can wear beautiful crosses which was used, used to be the sign of torture and shame, is now the sign of victory and glory. In, Saul, in Isaiah 53, another painted picture of the crucifixion 700 years before its time. It says, you read wounded for our transgressions, but it's much deeper than that in Hebrew. It says, He was run through and made unclean, made desecrated. And that happened from our transgressions. In other words, our transgressions, our rebellion ran him through. And you say, well, I haven't robbed a bank. I haven't murdered anybody. That's okay, because Isaiah continues on and tells you what the sin of humanity is. Anybody ever see the depictions or read in the Bible where they would have to confess their sin over the scapegoat or use the lamb that belonged to the Lord for atonement? Oh, yeah. So Isaiah tells you the sin that you have to confess over this one who's pouring his soul out as an offering for sin. And here it is. Here's the confession. All we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way. And so God took that iniquity and has laid it on this servant of the Lord. Isaiah 53. The sin of humanity is rebelling against his father. Adam wants to decide on his own what's right and wrong. Adam wants to say, but I can know it. I, I'll, I'll do my thing. You do you. I do my truth, your truth. Guess what? That's impossible. Either this is a phone or a dog. If you think it's a phone, you might be sane. If you think it's a dog, you're definitely crazy. The truth is objective. 
And there is one event that stands out in all of human history that beckons to be recognized. Is this true? And it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For if Christ is risen, then he is who he says he is. And if he is who he says he is, he will do what he said he will do to all those who come to him. So why would you wait another day? What are you waiting for? Who will have to shake you and say, give your heart to Jesus and serve him? Now is the day of salvation. Today is the acceptable time. Oh, when you're in trouble, you want God to answer you now, don't you? So why not run to him now and let him turn that defeat, that loss, that shame, that evil. And it was a defeat. I'm not trying to give you a pep talk. It was bad. It does look hopeless and dry. But he can take that worst thing that you've ever done and make it the best thing he ever did. That is what happens when you and God cross. And that's what today is about. Jesus took that moment of shame and he rose from the dead so that Peter and John and Mary and others say, Christ is risen. They They could say, probably they were saying, Mashiach, come! Mashiach, come! The Messiah is risen! Because if he is who he says he is, he'll do what he said he'll do. And get this. Jesus, and I'll leave you with this, for his entire ministry called his disciples children. My children, my children, because rabbis were known as fathers. Even Paul, referring to those who he converted, uh, he said, I'm I'm like your father. So he rightfully calls his disciples children. In Isaiah 53, it says he'll see his seed. That means his children. So Jesus is called everlasting father. In Isaiah 9, 6, he's a father. But guess what happens when he's risen from the dead and he comes out of the tomb, even to those who were weak in faith, he says to that woman who finds him, go tell my brothers. I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. The Son of God is risen indeed. Blessed be the resurrection of Christ. Amen. I love you. Let's worship the Lord.
trust in God. I trust in God. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. Why is that, yo? I trust in God. Oh, I trust in God. I trust in God. Say that again. I will walk. I will walk. all of you that chose to worship with us this morning. There are churches that are full to the brim, the Catholic church next door. There's people that are parking in our lot. And I have to admit, I've got kind of a bad attitude about it. No, I do. I do. I do. Now here, God knows. God knows. So why can't I tell you? And <laughs> I thought, I want our parking lot to be so full. Ain't nobody can come in there and take the place. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. But I bless. I stood at the door a while ago and I looked over there and I said, God, Bless every one of those people that are over there and let them feel your presence the way we feel you in here. God is so good. Remember this. God is merciful. His goodness is forever to all generations. We can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for mercy, and he gives it to us. I don't think we needed another song today, but I was requested to sing this by two yes. very special nephews. <clears throat> I haven't done it many, many, many moons. So God knows. I'm going to sing the perfect rose. Jesus is our rose of Sharon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Scarlet red, its petals open in full bloom, taking nothing but the sunshine, leaving fragrance in the room. Hands reached out without a reason, crushed and bruised the pale soul, causing yet a sweeter fragrance from the weeping dying rose lying now in ruins to wither, cast aside by careless hands. 
Once an art of perfect beauty dies to never bloom again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you. In the corner of a stable, on a spread of swaddling clothes Just a tiny bud But destined To become the perfect rose Angels hailed his entrance Wise men brought him gold Knowing little of the suffering that would soon befall the rose. Hands reached out without a reason, crushed and bruised the perfect rose, causing yet a sweeter fragrance from the weeping as the crimson color floor ugly thorns had never marred him till a crown of thorns he wore tasting death the rose of Sharon rose to bloom for Evermore Tasting death The rose Here it comes Of Sharon He rose To bloom accompanist in the world playing in any key and sometimes she chooses her own key <laughs> and, and and we sing anyway and we sing anyway we've done it all pastor Harling. we've done it all but she's also a wonderful anointed singer we've done it all our lives praise God praise God praise God praise God praise God I'm not going to hold you much longer, but you know, we were just thinking. Y'all, we, we did pretty good. I'm looking at that. That's what I'm saying. I thought it was like 2 o'clock or something. <laughs> just relax. It's Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Isn't God good? Yes, I want to give you just three portraits, and I'm going to kind of settle down on one of them just really quickly. This week in our word, we've been considering three lenses through which we must see Christ in order to truly know him. Because if we observe the crucifixion, resurrection, and glorification 
of Jesus Christ as just an event that we are somehow watching like we would watch a television program. So we're sad in the appropriate places. We clap in the appropriate places. We get excited in the appropriate places. But when you leave that movie theater or your couch, you are the same person you were before you watched that. No matter how glorious the story, no matter what, how deep a romance, if you and your spouse are not getting along, and none of that rubs off on you. Now you're just resentful that it don't look like that. You aren't changed. You had those moments. Several years ago, the Lord gave me a message that came out of the fact that as I was waking up in the middle of the night, I saw a man standing over in the corner of my room behind like a pulpit and he just said uh, two sentences very simple he said some will have an experience oh I, y'all I'm going to get excited right here some will have a visitation some will have an experience some will have a visitation What is the difference? Well, Jesus, after the Hosanna incident, he he looks at Jerusalem and he weeps over Jerusalem and said, you have missed the hour of your visitation. Oh, they had an experience, didn't they? Hosanna! We talked about it last Sunday, Palm Sunday. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that fervor dropped with the palm leaves. It was an experience. He came to give them a visitation that would not leave them unchanged. I'm going to say it one more time. It would not leave them unchanged, but yet they chose to stay the way they were. And not too many years after that, the whole thing was destroyed. That in which they gloried was taken away and they were scattered, not to be gathered again for some time because they missed their visitation. So if we look at the events of Holy Week and if we live our lives as though we've seen this beautiful story, it's got all the right elements of it. Intrigue, sorrow, exuberance. And we keep it as a story, not understanding that what we are looking at in the Christ is a relationship, something he did for us. We've talked about looking at the suffering Christ, who the Lord, not that long ago, told me he did not need my sympathy. You see, he did what he did in obedience to the Father. And he, that obedience, And what it would fulfill kept him on the cross all the way until giving up his spirit. It's what he was looking to. The obedience that the father, the cup the father had given him, he drank fully to the last. Him looking at what he would accomplish for us. He who knew no sin became a sin offering for us. Why? That we may be free from the power of sin and death. You cannot be a changed individual. You cannot have a visitation if you are still bound by a law of sin and death. But then we hear in Romans, for the law of the spirit of life, in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's what his suffering indicates. And 
Pastor Noah referenced the wearing of the cross. This is a reminder to principalities and powers that this thing is settled, my friend. It's settled. Throw at me what you will. Bring by me what you will. Accuse me in whatever way you will. But you're talking about someone who is dead, dead, dead. Because that sin and the power of it and the power of death died on that cross. That's what you should see when you see the suffering Christ. And to repent that our depravity required such a cost, such a terrible cost, a perfect sacrifice, which we could never be. And God, knowing that, takes on flesh and walks among us in our realm of limitation. Yet he didn't seem all that limited, did he? Because he was walking the way we would be able to walk when he did what he came to do. There's, I'm not going to go into the parable, but there's a parable you may have missed. I believe it's in Luke's telling of the minas where the, the, the ruler gives each of the servants an amount. You know, and then he comes back and has them give an account of what interest or whatever they've made. Okay, that's a good point, but we'll put that aside for today. But something we often miss is he's talking about this ruler, and he said he left to receive a kingdom. He left to receive a kingdom. Well, didn't the Lord already have a kingdom? Oh, yes, he did. We didn't. So he went and received when he rose from the dead and was taken into heaven. He received from the Father the kingdom that he would give to us in which we would rule and reign with him forever. He received a kingdom. He already was over all things, but we were under all things. And of all things, the devil himself. Wow. But he on the cross broke those chains. And then he died. But he rose again. The resurrected Christ leads us into newness of life, newness of life. You see, between the time that the Lord suffered on the cross and then was taken back up into glory, seated at the right hand of all power, the Father, and is making intercession for us, between this gory and this glory is a span in which we must live as newness of life, having newness of life now. Now. And, and how did he accomplish that? Well, he took away the power of sin and death. And then when he raised up to newness of life by the ho same Holy Spirit, that he sent back the promise of the Father. I'm not going to leave you orphans. I will come to you. And he did just that. Those disciples waiting in that upper room, and we will celebrate that in about 50 days. And they received the Holy Spirit of God, who now comes into your life to be your coach, your guide, your strength your understanding to be able to live between the dying and the glorification, the newness of life right there in the middle, and that's where we are. And, and this is what the Lord wanted me. This is the part I'm going to stand on so you, you'll really know that he wants this for you, is 
there are reasons you're not experiencing the newness of life. Now, there's a scripture in Isaiah 5.18 that talks about, says, Woe to the person who pulls by a rope, I'm going to put it in my words, this cart full of sin. Now, in different translations, you'll find out that that, that rope is, a, is, a, is lies, deception. And that brings the cart of sin behind you. Okay, now, some of you didn't hear this, so I'll remind all of you a few weeks ago when we talked about that Jesus had gone before us into the Holy of Holies and became the anchor of our salvation, our, the reason for our hope. And remember we talked about between us and him is the rope of hope. Anchoring in him who has already gone into the holy of holies. And we hold on to that. And as long as we hold on to the rope of hope, there is no demon in hell. There is no ugly person at work. There's not even a weakness in your own flesh that'll keep you from going where he is. You see, that's going to be the glory. But then again, between where we are and that is the the new life we must live, holding on to that rope of hope. But there is an element that we are missing, and this is what the Lord wants you to remember for today, for every day. Now, whereas this scripture in Isaiah that I referenced is talking about people that are out there using deceit to be able to support their sin, they got this rope of uh, lies and deceit, the cart dragging behind them. But I will tell you something. When we grab onto that rope of hope connected to our Savior and the Holy of Holies, we've got to cut the rope of deceit and lies that our experience has told us, that our old life has told us, that the enemy of our soul continually tells us, you're never going to do this, you're never going to do that, or you're definitely going to do this, you're definitely going to do that, or who do you think you are? Or, no, you know, shouldn't you just have a little me time? All those things that the enemy says. You see, when we come to Jesus Christ, he has broken the power of sin and death. He has given us his Holy Spirit to help us walk this newness of life. But our part is like Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, to be renewed, transformed by the renewing of our mind, allowing the Holy Spirit to cut from us As we're holding on to the rope of hope, let's let's do it with two hands. Let's let go of that rope holding that card of our past, the card of our sin, the card of the generations that were behind us, the card of our disappointments, the card of our faults and failures, the card of things that we shiver to think about having done you got to let go. You, you've got to uh, recognize that the cross gave you the power to let go. If you insist on holding on to it, you'll never live newness of life. And you will erroneously think that there is no power to salvation. You must recognize that what the Lord did is cut your chains. But if, if I was chained and you cut it and then I decided I got to hold on to that chain, I, I'm still being controlled, right? You have the rope of hope going into the Holy of Holies where Jesus is. He's already done it for you. He's giving us that upward call into glory, an upward call. Think about the Apostle Paul said, I... I, I, I can't tell you that I've attained, but I tell you, this one thing I do, I cut that rope carrying that cart of who I was behind me. 
and I put both hands on the rope of hope that I am going to lay hold of that for which Christ laid hold of me, that upward call. It's being called into his glory where we will rule and reign with him forever. But in between, in between the glory, the death, and the glory, the life to come, you can live now in newness of life. The Holy Spirit will help you and guide you. You've got to listen to him. You've got to read the word. You've got to take your mind off of the things of this world. Put your mind where Christ is, Colossians 3, seated at the right hand of God. And then you've got 1 John 3. Beloved, now we are the children of God. But it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that we shall be like him. Because we will see him as he is. Grab hold of the rope of hope and cut the rope of deceit. Let that cart go to hell where it belongs. And let's live in newness of life. Amen and amen. I turn it over to the pastors for our table of the Lord. Lord, we as your body, we receive your word, Lord, and we say yes to it. Lord, we don't just contemplate it and say, well, we'll think about that, God, but we are yours. We are your disciples. We are your people. Lord, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would draw us closer to Jesus. Now we're going to take of the table of the Lord, and if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then we want you to come down to the altar to receive the elements, we'll receive them together. And if you're participating online, we have several uh, wonderful, very involved online campus members. We're going to uh, receive together in just a minute. Go ahead and ready your elements.
Jesus said to his disciples, well, you know what? Let's give them communion. Let the little children come to me. So we're going to give them communion too before we receive together. Jesus says to his disciples, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part in me. Lots of Jesus fans, lots of Jesus subscribers to have part in him, you have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. That he's not Someone will check off the box or say we're okay with, but someone who is a part of us, who has broken himself for us. And as we receive this bread, if you're broken today, Jesus went all the way for you. He let himself be all the way broken so that there's no edge he hasn't gone to. You can't say, well, I'm, I'm, I've suffered more than Jesus. I've gone past where Jesus can go. He went to the very edge so that through his resurrection, what was broken may be made whole. So say this with me together. Lord Jesus, I receive your body in thanksgiving, in joy, and in overflow. You may receive the time you've heard it, but if you're new, I ask you to think, have you ever heard maybe in a song or seen a Jewish person greet another one and they say shalom or they have that word in there that means peace? Something beautiful about what Jesus did from the cross is when he cried out and he said, it's finished, in his language, in Aramaic, he would have said how shalom, which means it's being paid over, it's being transmitted. If you replace that first letter, which is the middle letter of the alphabet, with the first and second, first and last letter of the alphabet, he said on the aleph and the top, or the beginning and the end, if you take those two and replace it, it becomes it shalom, which means paid, perfect, complete. Jesus, what he did on the cross was to convert your debt into wholeness. People talk about being solvent, being solvent, debt-free. What he has done is not just gotten you out of hawk with the devil. 
He has made you wealthy in the heavenly world. You're a son, a daughter of God because he died to pay for it. And that's what this is. That's why he says this is, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is it. But you know what? He wasn't just there. You know what? There wasn't just a cup floating in the middle of the universe. There was Jesus and his disciples gathered together, eating together in love. This is the new covenant, the family of God. Amen? Amen. And so, Lord, we pray together. I, as the representative, saying, if we have sinned, forgive us, Lord. If we've sinned knowingly or unknowingly, wittingly, that is, desiring to or not desiring to, in thought, word, or deed, or in failing to think, speak, or do. Forgive us, Lord God. We've sinned against our own bodies, our brothers, our sisters, the world, our family and friends, but ultimately in all of that, we have actually sinned against you and you alone. And we ask you based on this wonderful, it is finished work of Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if you believe that let the Lord know by confessing this with me saying this is your blood the new covenant shed for me for the forgiveness of sin for me and my household my family my people now and always And now, according to the authority that Jesus vested, saying, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. Whatever you, I give you the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be having been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be having been loosed in heaven. We say, according to that high priesthood, after the order of Melchizedek, your sins be forgiven. Every plan of the enemy be undone, thrown down, loosed and, and spread like ashes scattered. And every plan of God be gathered, brought into one, and raised from the dead in your life. 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 It's impossible. Well, that's God's specialty. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, do we have any prayer requests? Well, we do know that Sister Valerie... Uh, her husband, Michael, just had surgery on Good Friday. It was put off. It was put off. We do know that that but surgery has been put off. But he is very, so let's, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch Valerie and Michael. Lord, not one here and another there, but together, Lord, gather them in your arms. Gather them in your arms and breathe on them. Newness of life. Lift their heads. As David said, you're the lifter of my head. When we are just worn out, put out, ashamed, got nowhere else to turn, and our heads are hung down, you are the one that lifts up our head. He says, don't be frightened, my child. Be not afraid. It is I. The Lord is with you. May the Lord touch Michael and Valerie now. That putting their trust together in the Lord's hand, two hands in his hand, that he would lead them into green pastures, into wholeness, into life, into peace, into blessing, into fruitfulness, into power in the Holy Spirit. We release it to them in Jesus' name. It is done. Amen. Well, and with that, let's, uh, Brother Nathan, why don't you say a prayer for the online audience in general, and then we'll pray for those here. I want you to lend your faith to those who are watching online and pray with me for them. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I ask that you break the chains of bondage. Lord, that you drive out the demons and the devils out of their lives. Lord, that you drive out sickness, that curse would be thrown down, and that blessing would be raised up in their life. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. By the authority and blood of Jesus, we break those curses. Ooh. Hallelujah.
and we issue forth the life stream of the river of living water that comes from Jesus and flows through our bellies that you may have life. Lord, I ask that you give them an earnest of that inheritance that they may eat of the tree of life and be healed. That by your name, the enemy would be cast out of their lives, that they would be made whole, and that the riches of your blessings would be poured out upon them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you. Amen. Amen. Now.